Hey everyone, taking some time at the gym uh, to give you my thoughts on Canon Films' Aladdin. Uh, the Disney live action reboot has just come out and um, they're probably not going to set up, I, I haven't quite seen it yet, I was instead looking at uh, what other live action Aladdins I could find that predated the Disney version so I didn't have it as an influence. So I could look as an adaptation of the original fairy tale and um, as something free from the Robin, inf Robin Williams influence to see what people were doing before that. There was also another one with Barry Bostwick in it, but I'll sum it up like this. Um, it looked like a bad stage play, except it's except that it had just enough trick photography and post-production effects that it was clearly not a stage play. Questionable singing, questionable singing. And an ancient China populated entirely by white people. This did not age well. This did not look well. Um, and it was hard to find a sympathetic character. I've seen playthroughs of Mortal Kombat Special Forces where the final confused product was so bad they couldn't last five minutes. I feel like I should be proud to say I stuck with this one longer than that. But as a completionist, I expect better of myself. And so now we're going to completely ignore that one. We're going to instead talk about the Bud Spencer one by Canon Films. And okay. If you don't have a budget to work with, they they actually addressed that, and they clearly had much more of a budget than those other guys. Um, they uh, said, what if Aladdin's lamp uh, had spent a couple of years in the sea and then got picked up by a salvager and then sold to a pawn shop? Um, so instead of trying to, uh, um, get a bunch of white actors to portray Arabia or parts of Arabia that are currently China, um, they brought it to Miami. And so as much as it is Al Hayden's story, uh, stepping in for Aladdin, which is treated as an actual um, as an actual uh, bit of uh, folklore within this universe. Um, it's it's the genie's story. Uh, it's a fish out of water discovering beer and driving the police crazy. Uh, Um, reflecting on his past and what in this strange new world reminds him of it. I didn't... I wouldn't say I enjoyed it um, as a film in its own right, but as a character study, as an adaptation study, and as a cultural study, I got pretty invested in it. Um... Uh, the genie seems pretty content with his lot in life and shows some real affection for his master. Um, it wouldn't be the last time that the ma master was a child who imprinted on the genie as a parent. But, um, 
uh, at least the last telling that I know of. The other one I know was a uh, children's book that was actually a sequel to the fairy tale. And uh, the reason that's, okay, this is going to be spoilerific, but uh, the reason that the genie becomes human in this version um, is, uh, well, it's the 80s, so there has to be some public sector villain in this one, and come on, height of the Cold War, a supernatural figure that grants wishes, um, and can teleport out of police cells, and conjure, uh, what was it, Rolls Royce? He conjures like three of them. Um, and uh, so naturally, once uh, Al has to give the game up that this is an actual genie and not a robot or an alien, uh, they find them, he saves genie from being vivisected and even even the scene of how we get to that is, is actually pretty clever um, doesn't need a lot of effects but it's a good punch but it's a good setup to a punchline with a lot of silly uh, subversions of expectations along the way all right you know what I think I do like this movie um, <laughs> uh, well naturally this poorly defined uh, military FBI CIA I, I I don't know what his job is or why the police uh, had to answer to him or it's very poorly set up uh, but Jeannie has to uh, in his own mind uh, be cast into the depths of the sea so that no one will find him. It was one in a million that Al Hayden was the first one to rub that lamp. Um, imagine a master who wants to turn all nuclear silos into candy except for the one he commands to dominate and assert power over everyone so that he can dominate and assert power over everyone. All, even if all there's only one nuke on the planet, it only takes that one nuke going off. Um, so Al makes him human. Also, I wouldn't worry about that guy in the future because Genie turns the choppers that are chasing him on the magic carpet into hot air balloons. The magic carpet is teased repeatedly throughout the film. In fact, the uh, the red Rolls Royces, where the wheel is on the European side, even though it's in Miami. I, I don't understand why. Uh, but anyway, you lost a bunch of choppers and you lost them to the genie of Aladdin's lamp, and you had all this set up for investigating an alien or a robot, and the, the internal scan said what about his anatomy? Uh, oh, that guy. That guy is, uh, oh. Uh, suddenly his wife is the least of his worries. Um, So, uh, yeah. All right. Um, I'll leave the rest to you. Uh, I, I have Comcast, so I pushed the microphone button on the remote and I said Aladdin, and uh, I got the Disney trailer. I got the... Uh, 
Harry Bostwick version. And I got this. There is a lot I didn't get to about it. So, uh, if you're interested in something on uh, getting your kids to be neatly distracted for about an hour, um, or you're interested in contemporary takes on classical folklore, or you just like um, you just like an all ages comedy that's good for all ages, not just the very young ones. Um, I suggest this one more than I recommend it. I definitely was trying to keep my analytical brain on the whole time, and that's where I found a lot of my ups and downs. So, yeah, catch you later.